Okay. <laughs> it's already running. We call this a selfie mode, Eric. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, so this is a selfie mode interview <laughs> with Eric Gottman from the Etsy. Uh, 11 o'clock uh, well to be honest I've just been into town and it's really nice with all the snow it's I just heard that in Copenhagen it hasn't had any snow since the last few months am I lucky well it's kind of cold and wet but it's a nice uh, nice atmosphere always when it's snowing actually so I'm back at the AC Hotel Bella Sky here in Copenhagen. Okay. <laughs> it's already running. We call this a selfie mode, Eric. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, so this is a selfie mode interview <laughs> with Eric Gottman from the Etsy. Uh, but Eric, serious, we, you had a great presentation um, not such a long time ago. It was about the development of the standard as it is today for from narrowband to broadband, 4G, and finally into 5G, what we see here. That's the new logo. That's the first time on camera, probably, I understand. But tell us a little bit more about the challenges you have had because it's not easy to set a standard to get all of the manufacturers joining you and, and providing input. What are exactly the challenges on, on getting the standard off the ground? Well, the, the initial challenge was really... And we talk about yeah. Mr. Critical Push to Talk, right? MCPDT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, so this has been, been ongoing now for some years and, and the initial challenge was to get, uh, I would say, critical mass from real uh, investing agencies involved to say exactly what it is that they want, what, what it is that they expected the standard to deliver them. And already this involved getting Europeans and Americans and Asians to the same table to identify a common set of requirements. Uh, and, and that task really was quite intensive. I, 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 the, the initial requirements for mission critical push to talk were uh, a, 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 quite a breakthrough. And, and from there, we began to build the infrastructure in Release 12. But it was only in Release 13 that we began to define the application. And it's application into working that is, is of absolutely critical importance to this. Well, if you work with so many countries, so many companies, is the cultural thing, is that also a challenge or is that less of a challenge? I think it's uh, challenging, but, but uh, honestly, this has been going on for quite some time in mobile telecommunications. In fact, mobile telecommunications uh, as a national phenomena uh, is already 20 years into our past. So uh, in the, by, the, by the late 90s already, we had uh, the work ongoing in 3GBP. There was 3GBP2. And uh, at this point, 3GBP2 uh, has, has uh, all but, but ceased their work and, and uh, focuses on 3GBP for this kind of mobile telecommunications. So there's a lot of experience working across these different national standards organizations. 
certain success. Okay. That's right, that's right. All, right. All right. So these were the challenges. Yeah. Now about the 5G part because yeah. it looks like everybody's forgetting about the 4G. We're already into 5G, but that, that's definitely not true, right? Absolutely. Step by step. Can you tell us a little bit more about that process? So these generations don't come about out of nothing. The, the work is already ongoing for several years. So many of the themes that we're looking at for, for 5G are focused on, on addressing verticals, that's to say entire industries that have typically not been directly engaged in mobile telecommunications. And critical communications is one of those verticals, Absolutely. isn't it? And, and that engagement has taken place in the, in the context of 4G, precisely for the reasons that you stated initially, which is this a move from narrowband to broadband communication. So 4G provides a platform for broadband communication, but it isn't sufficient. It isn't a platform that has the capabilities that are required for the use cases and scenarios that the agencies have in mind. So 4G had to expand and adapt to, provide, to develop capabilities for device-to-device -device communication, to develop a much richer application to multicast interface and uh, communications capability. And so these fundamental capabilities are, are pillars upon which Mission Critical Push to Talk and other mission critical services rest. So what we're what we're doing is we're building out our existing 4G system in order to support mission critical applications. How does this have to do with 5G? 5G we're, we're taking a much broader and, and I would say more ambitious step in saying what kinds of communication mobile communication can or even wireless can be achieved that would be in the interest of, of different industry sectors that we cannot achieve today. Now just providing broadband communication is not really a, a 5G service. Providing a form of broadband communication that has greater capacity, greater reliability, lower latency than anything that we can do today, that's a 5G service. The, the intersection between those requirements and mission and public safety are still being worked out. That's that's to be honest. And and even more, the I think it, one has to see that when uh, agencies and when the industry invests in technology, it takes time to mature. It takes time to be adopted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the relationship between those two companies, right? Yes, this of course. Yeah. But public safety requires collaboration and also discussions whether we're not going to move it forward. Yeah? Ex exactly. And that's good to see because we all need to work together, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This industry is not going to work without. No. Exactly. Thanks. It's kind of cool to see Ericsson and Nokia sitting down together discussing things. Whatever they discuss, I don't know. Can I disturb you for a moment? <laughs> You're doing a training here, do you? <laughs> yeah. So what, what kind of training are you doing? Uh, it's, it's just a training for the uh, me, uh, operational questions on, on the Tetra mobile. Um, All right. So, how to handle the mobile. So this is your first training session? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's my first online training session. All oh, right. <laughs> so, how does it go? Yeah, it's it's very interesting, and um, uh, I could I could imagine it's it's very helpful for uh, e-learning uh, for almost every first responder. So, it's, it's very very impressive. Oh, so that was Manfred Blaha doing this training, and now that is here at the uh, the Critical Communications Finland training session here. Um, quite interesting, and these all these training sessions are uh, being set up by uh, Tetrasim. So these training sessions are being set up by you guys, is it? Yes. yes so, so can you can you explain a little bit more what Manfred is doing on the training? Yes. First, there's uh, self-learning. They are going to learn what the radio terminal does, which are the buttons and keys, and and they are also going to learn what kind of talk groups. Uh, are used so mm -hmm. not only the talk groups uh, in, in technical way but also in operative way which talk group do I use in which situation 
and blindly, right? You yeah, just exactly. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also fast keys or, or how you call them, soft so keys. It's a, or so fast it's a real training, so right? You do really have is. to get into it. Yeah, yeah. But also it takes a different time, depending how quickly you learn. So it might be that you are very quick learner, and you learn it in 20 minutes. But for me, it might be that it takes 40 minutes. So there are really big individual. Uh, and the system adapts automatically to that. The system adapts it that that way that it tests whether you have learned or not. In all the time that you guys are in this market, I haven't seen any other companies doing exactly the same. Yeah. So you're still yeah. the leader in that. Yeah, we are still the leader. We are doing business development because our competitors are trainers who have slide sets and, exactly. and terminals and they go around. And for them it's important that they have training. But for us it's more important actually, not only that training was held, but that you have learned. Perfect. So Did you can manage the way we communicate in the yeah, group with exactly. this learning system. Yeah, exactly. Or I will give you instructions. Uh, so you're the black belt. Yes. I'm the rookie. I don't know anything <laughs> about communications. And yeah. I'm learning how yeah. to use the system, but yeah. also how to communicate exactly. over the system. It's because the way you communicate. Exactly. And how what do you say? What do you not exactly. say? Exactly. And, and this is spe specifically how, how does your organization communicate? So not just how to press the PTT, but what is your communication plan? So one thing is for sure, it is not about pressing the PTT button. It's also how you communicate. That's quite important. And this training session learns you exactly how to do that and what to say, what not to say. Kind of interesting. And then to understand that this company, TetraSim, is the only company in the world who developed a training system like this. It's no good competition. So that means big bucks for Tetrasim over the coming years, I think. <laughs>